Howie, baby, we're sending the limousine for your client. Don't worry. 245, they love me Taj Hotel, Beverly Hills. It's gorgeous. It'll be a stretch. Okay, babe. Yeah. Power 10 is Saturday. You know, people say to me, Paul Ryan, what do you do before a show? And they have absolutely no... Excuse me for one second. Hello? Patty, how are you, babe? Yeah. Tapes will be there tomorrow morning. First thing, 1030 FedEx. Love to Bob. Okay. You know, the calls are coming in from New York. I have things to go over in my head. It's a lot of things. Excuse me for one second. Hello? Mom, am I getting ready to do a show? Yeah, I'll be there 10.30 for Friday. Absolutely, Dad's birthday. Okay, babe. Okay, bye-bye. Okay. Pressure, pressure, pressure. You know, it's unbelievable. What kind of pressure? I love it all. This is the Lermy Toss in the jacuzzi on the rooftop. Give me a great camera. I love it. Welcome to our show. Join me and my celebrity guest for an exciting edition of the world through celebrities' eyes coming to you from Los Angeles, California. Oh. My guest is one of the most recognizable faces on television in the world. Six years, he was Snapper Foster on The Young and the Restless. Mm. Four years as Michael, Michael Ryder on The Night Rider, which ran for four years on NBC and is seen in 72 countries throughout the world. His latest series, Baywatch, is ready to go into syndication throughout the world. He's a major recording star in Europe. His hit, Looking for Freedom, is enormous in Germany, and he sang it at the Berlin Wall on New Year's Eve. Here is the pride of Baltimore, Maryland. Here is David, the new father, Hasselhoff. How are you? you? Well, I'm great, thanks. Really good. How's your life, Dave? Right before you, did I do all That's that? That's it. I mean, you know, a this lot is of like years of like, uh, a series. This series. is your life, series. You know, series. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, you've been you've been working. I got to get out on television and make that leap into features one day. Yeah. Well, you did the movie with Joan Collins. The uh, yeah, it was a movie that we called Cartier Affair, mm -hmm. which was fun. Test and patience. Test and patience. Yes. Working with Joan. Yes, it really. <laughs> Hair, makeup. Yeah. Joan, where are you? Yeah. Yes. You sang your your hit song, "Looking for Freedom," at the Berlin Wall on New Year's Eve. It must have been a very exciting event. Hundreds of thousands of people were there and catching this. What was the feeling like when you did that? I had been to East Germany before the wall had come down, and I had actually met a couple girls, and I said, oh, you, you watch the show with a talking car? They went, talking car? And I said, you watch Baywatch? Baywatch? And then they said, David Asselhoff, the singer. So I went, I was really touched, because this was the first place in the world that I had gone to where they only knew me as a singer. Mm -hmm. So I took a picture with them and took the picture back to the West, in West Berlin, and had it put in the newspaper. The song was... Um, that I recorded there was called Looking for Freedom and uh, it was an amazing thing because um, six months after that the wall came down. The song went number one for eight weeks and they asked me to sing on New Year's Eve and I had this brilliant thought it's gonna be a big party at the Brandenburger Gate and I should ask if I could sing it on the wall and I thought they said you're crazy. They mm -hmm. said what a fantastic idea. So I went back and I went in a crane above the wall and uh, there were 500,000 people there. And I had my song, full playback in the crane, looking for freedom, and I looked down, and these people, half of them who don't speak a word of English, were all singing, I've been looking for freedom. And it was the most emotional performance of my life. I thought I could fly. I wanted to jump out of the crane, you know, and How just amazing. embrace everybody. Great event. We're going to fly right now to a little commercial break and come back to see the world of David Hasselhoff when we come back right here at the Lermitage Hotel in Beverly Hills. Stay with us. Back with David Hasselhoff, the Lermy Taj Hotel, who loves our theme song, and you are you're keeping rhythm to the it's beautiful. To yeah, yeah, it's a hit. It's it was a, a hit. hit. It followed your hit in Germany with this. We should put it on Baywatch and have me chasing some Nubel princess down the beach. And you did a lot of that in Baywatch, did you not? <laughs> yes, and the water was very cold, so to speak. That's acting. That really oh. is. You're going in that water. Yeah, it was cold. I mean, they, you know, the dead of winter here. Everyone is supposed to look like it was beautiful and sunny. It looked that way, but uh, the water was 48 degrees. 
So it's uh, and you got to pretend that it's yeah. hey, dude, surf's up. <laughs> it's you got to look good and feel good. They would say uh, that take was great. Can we have another one for insurance? I'd say print it twice. <laughs> <laughs> yes. You're an enterprising individual because Baywatch was a series on NBC, and then you went to uh, the convention. You became executive producer. Now you're going to syndicate and do a whole new version of it. What happened was. Um, uh, Baywatch, there was a bit of a problem between the network and the studio. The studio was having problems and the network decided to uh, cancel the show. And so I said, well, great, it was a great year. Thank you very much. I'll move on to the next project. And I went off to Europe to, uh, to do a 20-city uh, a tour. And everybody was freaking out over Baywatch, especially in London. So we had. I this, hear it's huge in England. It's, it's un unbelievable. It's like a 55 share. And the same way in Germany, Austria, Switzerland, and these are places that know me as a singer. And so uh, we had this brilliant idea. Maybe we could do a co production because I've spent so much time in Europe and I, I see how all the television channels have changed from government controlled to cable, you know, and all these private channels. So we went to each country and asked if they wanted to invest some equity. And uh, they all said yes. And we went, hmm. So we had half of our budget and we went to some syndicators in the United States and we did a test on it and the, the response was phenomenal. And we just put the deal together yesterday and we're going to go in front of the cameras um, June 3rd and the two hour pilot will air September 23rd. Excellent. 22 on the air. And Night Rider is going to be a... Uh, an Knight Rider's coming right? back as uh, three years I've been trying to mount the return of Michael Knight as a series of movie of the weeks, like uh, Perry Mason. Um, Tell I'm, me, is it rough getting into a regular car? I mean, <laughs> I mean after, you must be spoiled after that little talk. Everywhere car. I go, people say, where's the car, you know? And, and the guy, the valet guys will park my car and they say, hey, where's the Knight Rider car? I say, it just parked itself. Now, <laughs> yeah. you know? When you traveled, you recognized in, you know, Everywhere. obviously 72 countries. When you travel, have you had any odd moments, unusual moments when you've traveled? Oh, it's unbelievable. I mean, it, it's, it's, it's the most amazing thing, Paul, because every country I go, they know me. And um, I can affect people in such a positive way. I do a lot of work with children, and I can go into hospitals. I've gone to 20 hospitals in 20 different countries and, have, and am able to make these kids light up. And it's such a a blessing, you know, to be Michael Knight. And people say, don't you get tired of that? I say, are you kidding? I absolutely love it. I'm able to affect everybody in a positive way. I mean, th there's a lot of fun stories where I was in New Zealand and nobody knew I was there and I was driving down the road. I was actually doing an album there in New Zealand, you know, one of those TV albums, you know. Uh -huh. David Hasselhoff's greatest hit, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Sold 12 copies. I, my mother bought 11. But I went down. I bought the twelve. You bought the twelve. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Uh huh. But I went and I drove across the street, and there was two girls there, and I said, "Excuse me, I am um, Michael Knight, and I uh, I can't seem to find my car. I'm driving this Volvo. Have you seen a black Trans Am?" And they said, "Why no?" And I said, "Well, if you do, you know, would you please, you know, let me know?" And I drove away, and I looked in the mirror, and it took about twenty seconds, and all of a sudden I just went. Wah! <laughs> and they ran home, <laughs> and I can see they're telling their mom, "Michael Michael Knight was on the road," you know. Go to bed. It's the power of television. Surreal. See, if you're in New Zealand and you're watching it, the guy's in person. It must yeah. be an incredible thrill. One of the funniest things, I went into a bar in um, Toledo, Spain, which is the oldest city in Spain, and, the, and Knight Rider was on television. And, Hola, I am Michael Knight at Don Diaz Kit. And I walked in and I heard the theme of Knight Rider, and I walked in and all these people were like drinking and, and watching me. Mm -hmm. So I went up to the television and put my hand here and I said, Hola, Michael Knight. And they went, <laughs> No, no, no. <laughs> hey, I'm Michael Knight, guys. You know, I'm uh, here on a publicity tour. Nobody believed it. And then until finally, I, I walked out of the bar. I said, that's the funniest thing. No one believes I'm Michael Knight. And a little kid came out and went, Michael Knight. And they all came out and followed me down the street like I was Danny the Cade. Kids will believe it. Yeah, the kids. Where have you been to in the world that's really excited you? You've been there and you go, God, this is an incredible place to be. Well, on a uh, Africa. I've been on about five safaris in Africa. Um, five? Yeah, five different safaris, uh, different places um, in Botswana and where the Zulus live. And I went to one place, it's absolutely amazing, called Victoria Falls, which are the largest falls in the world. I think they're, they're not the highest. The highest are in uh, South America called Iguazu, which I've been to as well. But that's There's pretty, an Iguazu in Brazil, too. That's what I mean, in, in Brazil. Yeah. It's in Brazil and Argentina. It's right. right on the, right on yeah, the, I was the, there. Isn't that incredible? Incredible. The Devil's Throat, where you can walk out to it. 
you know, and it's amazing. Because I was in the Brazilian side, and then whenever you travel somewhere, if someone says, well, didn't you go on the Were you in the, side? in the pink hotel, in the very pink, yeah. where they had the helicopters that took off? They have yes, I went, I went on that on that ride. Isn't that... And they go around the side like that? Yeah. That's pretty frightening, isn't it? Yes. Yeah. For someone who's not used to a helicopter. I'm not either, not doing that. But I picture you to be a daredevil. You would be Well, the guy says, hello, we got Michael Knight up here. Hey, look at this. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> you know, so... Pretty but impressive that's pretty sight. impressive, yeah. But I like Africa. You know, being out in in the woods, uh, I mean, with the elephants roaming through your camp, it's just an unreal. You know, it's actually the most romantic place I've ever been. So you went five times. You obviously love safaris. We went on safaris where we would take little Piper Cub planes. And we found a bush pilot whose father was actually killed by a snake, a black mamba, I think it was, and, and it was the Okavango swamps. And we couldn't find any herds. We'd find maybe 30 elephants. But we said, we want to see herds of a Cape buffalo. So he picked us up in the plane, took, took the door off, and I had my little Sony Video 8, and we went out and we chased these animals. And I had this amazing footage of like elephants going, Wah! you know, and just Wah! buzzing these animals, places that you can't, not hardly any tourists go to. It's not like Kenya. Kenya, they, they, they shot out of Africa, so everybody goes to Kenya. Yeah. This is way down, like in Where they Central probably don't S have any television commercials, unlike we yeah, do. Yeah, that's right. Well, we're going to go then right now. That's Be right. responsible, right, Dave? This is a travel channel. Exactly. And come back with much more with Dave Hasselhoff at the Lermitage Hotel in Beverly Hills. Stay with us. When well, you're back at Lermitage with David Hasselhoff. Now, when I mentioned you were big in Germany, you are really big in Germany. No, the, the song Looking for Freedom was number one for eight weeks in, in a 1989 row. was um, the number one record we beat everybody. And, uh, Madonna, we had more sales than... Eat anybody. your heart out, Madonna. Well, for, you know, I got one country. Thanks, Madonna. You got 79. But, I mean, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> one down, 79 one down. to go. So tell me about performing to German audiences and, and your experience in Germany. Well, I played uh, to 20 cities uh, on my last tour, and we played, we started in 5,000 seaters and ended up playing to 12,000 a night. And it's amazing. The parents would bring their little kids, they don't speak a word of English, but they, I've been looking for freedom, and they just sing my songs and they do my moves. And each city would be more impressive than the next because they would know the words to my songs. And it blew my mind. It would what are these moves, Dave? I'm talking about these moves. Uh, what are the David Hasselhoff moves? Ripoffs of all, <laughs> uh, all major stars, uh -huh. you know? Uh, in fact, my wife always says, don't move so much. Just stand there and sing, you know? But um, no, I just run around the stage because I'm so enthusiastic that anybody wants to pay a ticket to hear me sing. And if there's somebody in the back row who is not into it, it affects me. You know, they can have like 10,000 people into it, but if there's some people that aren't into it, it I'm still so insecure that I want that last person yeah. to get into it. You know, it's got to be a tremendous high. I mean, to be on that stage and everybody's screaming. Yeah. You know what the it musicians is? Musicians are going. They had. Uh, I just did a show in East Germany um, uh, a week ago. And before you go on, they start chanting, David, David. And you're back in your dressing room, and you just go, yo, cha, cha. And you just yeah. get this unbelievable energy. Yeah. And my, my set was the Berlin Wall, because the song was called Looking for Freedom. And on an explosion, would, and the wall would come down, and it would be like the wall was broken. And, I, and the, the thing that I would see would be 12,000 people going like this. And, you, and I would go, this is not real. This is an amazing thing, because I'm going back to L.A. No one gives a damn. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm going to walk around the streets, go, hi, I'm the night runner. Yeah. You know, but over here, it's like, wow. Yeah. So it's uh, same great. thing happens to me on this show. People Where, are yes. yelling, Paul, 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 Paul. We're ready to start the show. Come on, it's I a different that. kind of a thing. Yes, here. but these guys, you, you know, I couldn't believe it when I walked <laughs> yes. in here. They're like, Paul, Paul, screaming at it's the top awesome. of their lungs. Yeah, <laughs> you've had an interesting career. You know, you've done so well on television. Now you have this recording, and the stardom going on in Europe. You were discovered by Joyce Selznick. You were working one of those great stories, working as a, as a, waiter, a waiter and yeah. being discovered by a casting director, and then. Yeah put into a soap and escalating from there, being one of the most highly visible doctors in daytime television. And yet you want this feature film. Are you, I mean, what is that? I don't know, I just see a movie like Dancing with Wolves and I get so impressed by the, by the, the, the beauty of filmmaking and, and the fact that you, know, you can take your time and, and grow and really study yourself as an actor. Sometimes in television, 
I, I find that I affect my work because I need to get that shot done to move on to the next shot. It becomes more like fast food television. And I mean, I'll see some old Night Riders and I'll go, oh God, ah, oh. you know. And I did a, a show with Raymond Burr, a, a Perry Mason, and I, I used it as an acting exercise. I said, David, don't do anything this time. Don't do anything. Don't act. Don't do anything. Mm -hmm. And it was so hard to do that, you know, especially with Raymond Burr, you know. And I saw the show and I was very pleased with my performance, except for the, the moments that I acted. And when I would watch, oh, why did you do something? And I would uh -huh. love to take film and experiment with that art with a director to really get into the, the back to my childhood, back to being uninhibited, back to not being aware of all these cameras and and my God, the sun's going down, let's get this shot. Come on, come on, you know, and you know, and just, you know, run fast, jump high and say your lines. Um, so when you, when you sing, I'm sure there's that wild abandonment kind oh, of yeah. feeling when you do that. Yeah, well, I, I wanted to, you know, I had a, a theater in my basement when I was eight years old. We did Annie Get Your Gun and Oliver and, and The Fantastics and all I wanted to I tried to, to get in. The tickets were sold out. They're I couldn't get out. to one of those shows, I Dave. know, Paul. I'm sorry about that. It was so expensive you in your my neighborhood. press agent, Johnny Harp, and she would have got you couldn't in. Couldn't get a seat in Baltimore. It was one of your shows. <laughs> So uh, from that moment, I wanted to be in, in musical comedy, in musical theater. And then I got into Snapper from The Young and Restless. Now tell me about that. Is this true that jealous husbands threw you in a pool or, you know, jealous... Do you have any... Is that Man, a, where did you find that out? Tell me, is this, any, hey, is is any this true? Yeah, that's is this, true. It is. Tell me about it. That's true. What happened? I mean... Well, I haven't thought about that. This guy was mad. His wife was like, you know, snapper ga 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 over, over me. And I was just saying, I'm only a person, you know, I'm not a doctor. And she's just, but you're so nice. And I love the scenes where you do this and this. And the husband got very jealous and picked me, my butt up and threw me like, <coughs> I mean, I didn't go right into the water. I took a, like a hop on the cement and into the pool. This is, but this is television, folks. This is not a career. I know. We, we, but there was a guy on the show who played a rapist, and he would leave the, the, the studio, and they would yell, rapist, rapist! You know, he finally said, i got to play a hero, you know. I've had people, I was in, a, I was in a, a restaurant once, and a guy was had an epileptic fit. And they came over, and they said, there's a man over here with an epileptic fit. You're Dr. Snapper Foster. You know, can you save his life? And I went, let the dog! And I went over and, you know, helped the guy out. But, I mean, they think that I'm a, they Isn't that that I was a doctor. There's doc, there's there's real life, and then there's television, and they're not quite the same. People would come up to me and they say, uh, "That girl," you, I say, "I'm not a doctor." They say, "Yeah, but that 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 girl Jill, she really is your sister." Mm -hmm. and I said, "No, she's not." And she goes, "But that, that lady, she really is your mother." And I said, "Well, I am a doctor. You need help." <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tell me, is becoming a father? Your little girl is nine months old. Right. Fatherhood changes. Oh, it's great. It's great. I was. Um, uh, I took her on tour with me, uh, my last promotional tour. She went to seven countries. and uh, So she travels well. Travels great. It was unbelievable. I mean, the first night, the only she had problems with the time zone the first night. It was a great moment in my life, Paul. I, had, I got a gold and a platinum record, and my, my baby, you know, my wife yeah. was passed out. I can't handle this. Boom. She I said, I'll stay up with the kid. This is easy, you know. Usually you'd stay up in a bar. Now I got the baby and the gold records, and I'm looking in the mirror going, this is what it's all about. Exactly. To have somebody to come home to, to yeah. share that success with. Yeah, it's like sharing a TV commercial break with you. I love These to share that. Isn't that fun to share that? I'm going to share is. it right now and come back with David Hasselhoff. <laughs> Stay with us. Love them. back with David Hasselhoff who took his baby seven countries right I think that's great because you know people wonder whether they should travel with their you know baby and so yeah. forth so your baby has been to how many countries been to seven seven she had no problem Germany France where is she at she went to um, Germany Austria Switzerland no 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 Germany Switzerland uh, Spain Belgium Holland England I think that's seven but uh, she, yeah just seven countries how was Austria Austria is great. It's a gorgeous country. It's very small, but around every curve is another like fantastic postcard. Um, but she traveled so well. That was so much fun, you know. I mean, in Germany, I have fans that, that hang out, you know, like like Elvis, you know, like a hundred fans, and they follow me everywhere. And I finally went out one day. I said, "Look, I really want to take my baby for a little stroll through this city. I promise, if you just leave me alone, 
I'll come back and sign all the autographs. And there I took my baby all bundled up and walked around and, you know, and, and came back. And she's looking, going, why are all these Germans hanging around? You know, and I put her to bed and come out and sign the autographs. And um, she, she handled it very well. It was a little difficult on us at times, I'm you know. Sure, it's yeah. like a traveling circus, you know. What do the fans give you? Every baby bottle that I have is in German. All the fans, see, like when you are the Guns N' Roses, I throw bottles and, you know, pig's heads, you know. They throw baby bottles and uh, teddy bears and clothing. Um, and because I bring my wife on stage, I say, my Frau und Eins, which is my wife plus one, and she was pregnant. And they all cheered, and they, and they accept me as kind of like the family rocker, because I'm into family and I'm into to my child and my wife, and they like that over there. They're really into, into the family structure in Germany. And uh, they would throw, my last concert, I swear, from one end to the next was all flowers. You're a great individual, David Hasselhoff. Continued nice success too. in Baywatch, in your recording career, in your pop music, everything. And your little baby and your wife. Thanks great a lot. Great having you here. Thanks for watching. We'll see you real soon. Take good care. Paul Ryan's clothing provided by Via Manzoni of Los Angeles, California. A store for men who recognize the best and know where to find it. Celebrity Transportation, provided by VIP Limousine. Accommodations provided by the beautiful Lermitage Hotel, resting grandly on a tree-lined boulevard in Beverly Hills, California. Within walking distance of Posh Rodeo Drive, the Lermitage is recognized as the most luxurious all-suite hotel in the world.